After almost a year and a half on the market, the Raspberry Pi Foundation just released an update to the Raspberry Pi Pico that adds wireless connectivity called the Raspberry Pi Pico W. It's almost completely pin compatible with the original Pico, but allows you to connect to the internet, making it perfect for IoT devices. The only difference pin-wise is the relocation of the debug pins from the end of the board more towards the center. Today we'll set one up and build a test project for it too. But first, we have to get our header pins installed. If you're new to soldering, it's pretty simple. You can click on the link on the screen now to follow my basic tutorial. Once our pins are in place, we can drop it onto a breadboard. While our first example doesn't need it, I've gone ahead and connected an SSD 1306 OLED based display. From there, I can test out the game I've been working on for the original Pico and, as you can see, it runs with absolutely no problems on the new Pico W. Of course, we didn't pick up the Pico with wireless not to connect it to the internet. So start off by downloading the Pico W firmware linked in the description below. If you haven't set up a Pico before, you can check out the video on the screen now for a walkthrough on getting everything set up. Now let's take a look at the code that will run and turn our Pico into a basic web server. So first things first, my source code is based on some sample code provided by the Raspberry Pi Foundation available at the link right here. So the first thing we're going to do is import network, which is going to allow us to be able to connect to a wireless network. We're also going to need to import socket. Socket is going to allow us to create an endpoint that allows us to host a web page. It'll listen for incoming connections and then serve them information when they come in. We'll also need to import time since we need to add some delays later on in the code. And finally, I'm also importing uRequests. This allows us to load a web page and grab some information from it, which you'll see later on. SSID and password are the wireless access point name and password for your Wi-Fi network. And of course, if we're hosting a website, we're going to need some website to host. So in this case, we're storing HTML right into a variable. And the one thing you want to pay attention to is this percent %s. That's a variable that's going to change depending on the number of connections the website has had. So we create a WLAN object called WLAN. We set it to active, and then we attempt to connect to the SSID that we provided earlier using the password provided. Then we set max weight to 10, and this is gonna to equate to 10 seconds. So it's gonna run a loop, and it's going to check to see whether or not the Wi-Fi has been connected. If it has been connected, it'll move on, but if it hasn't, it'll sleep for one second, and it'll do that a total of 10 times. If at the end of that we have a status of three, we know that we're connected to the network, but if not, we're going to raise the runtime error network connection failed. If we are connected, then we'll print out connected to console, and then we'll print out the information related to the connection. We're also going to store the address information in ADDR. From there, we're going to create a socket that's going to listen for incoming connections. We're going to bind it to the address and then tell it to listen. The next step is for us to load the website located at worldtimeapi.org forward slash API forward slash IP. That'll give you the local time based on your current IP address. We're going to store the result, and then we're going to parse out the current date and time by finding date time in the response and then trimming it based on 11 characters past that and 30 characters total into the document. So basically that's literally just going to pull out the date and time from the string that was returned here. Then we'll print the start time as well as the IP address that we're listening on. And then we're just sitting waiting for connections. When a connection comes in, we accept it. We store the client IP address for display later on and then print it out. And then essentially it's just a matter of returning the text and increasing our connection count by one. So we increase the connection count by one. We build our count text. And then at the end we do response and then there's our HTML. And then we're replacing that variable with count text. And then we send that response back and close the connection. And that is it. We are ready to host a page. So if we go ahead and run that on our Pico, You'll see it's now waiting for a connection. And with the connection established, we're now waiting for a connection on the IP address of 10.0.0.128. If we then open a browser window and go to 10.0.0.128 and just give it a second to load, 
We now see our Pico W hosted website, and this site has been accessed one time. And I've also included a link to the print and play website. Now, if we go back to the website and click refresh, you'll see that the count goes up by one. And for even more fun, we can connect an SSD 1306 display as shown in this diagram here. Then we can import the components we need, including PIN and I2C, as well as the SSD 1306 library, and set up some variables that allow us to display the information on the display rather than printing it out to console. In the response section, we can add a setup which blanks the OLED, and then displays the start time, IP address, and the IP of the last client to connect. And of course, you can modify these to display whatever you want. Finally, we do an OLED.show, and rather than the information being shown in console, it shows it right here. Well, hopefully this basic tutorial gets you up and running with a Wi-Fi enabled Raspberry Pi Pico. I think you'll have a lot of fun with it, and there's going to be lots more projects featuring the Pico W in the future, so make sure you subscribe for those. Hey, thanks so much for checking out my getting started with the Pico W tutorial. If you found it helpful, don't forget to toss me a thumbs up. I also want to give a thanks to my Patreon supporters on the screen right now who help make these tutorials possible. And don't forget to check out the other Pico tutorials on the channel, I'm sure you'll love them. Alright, well that's it for this one, but until next time, stay creative.